Yeah, so the answer to the question, is there anybody out there, is that there most certainly is. Yeah, my name is Podge Mulvahill. Uh, live here in Castlebar, in County Mayo. Come originally from Castlery in County Roscommon, about 50 miles from here. Yeah, it wasn't until my uh, teenage years that I began to question uh, religious upbringing, Catholicism in my case, in fact, in Castle 99.9% .9 of the people were Catholic, so from a religious standpoint, it was the only show in town. Uh, but I began to question whether there was anything in it. I thought it was fairly hollow. Now, there was a number of reasons I uh, eventually professed atheism. One was uh, because I saw there was nothing in it, uh, but second of all, because I wanted to be different and, and to be bit, because of a bit of arrogance on my part. I found atheism uh, a good way to live, if you like, in the sense that it gave me plenty of opportunities for good, friendly arguments with people. And I would always argue with my friends and I'd ask them questions like, what are you going to Mass for? What's all that about? Um, and when I was at school, uh, in, in secondary school, uh, we used to have a priest that would come in once a week to teach us Catholic doctrine. Uh, sacraments of the church and that type of thing and I, I i would harass the poor man i used to continually ask him where is his god bring him out here and i have a look at him i don't see any evidence for this god of yours and so much so that uh, one morning the principal of the school came in and said that he had received a phone call from the presbytery saying that the priest wouldn't be coming anymore and that we could have this period in the timetable free for the rest of the year so for a short while I became a class hero because people got a, got time off. Uh, but I felt sorry, in, in, in many years later, I, I did feel sorry for the priest and the way I had, I suppose, Barry Raggleton. Yeah, everything was to change in the late 70s. Uh, some friends of mine while at university in Galway were converted and they came home uh, telling, to, telling me what they had found, what they had heard, what they had encountered. And um, yeah, I, I again, I enjoyed, I reveled in, the, in, in just having a good argument. Uh, but what I found was that they were very, very convinced. It also seemed to be making a big change in their lives. They had a sense of purpose and meaning that they didn't have before and, and a joy. Uh, and I spent a lot of time with them, went even to meetings that they would have arranged um, and again, argued and fought and battled with them. Uh, one of my friends was studying science in university and he thought that if he brought home to me the evidences uh, for Christianity that that might seal the deal as it were. Uh, so he brought me home a book called Evidence That Demands a Verdict by Josh McDowell and it went through things like the evidences for the reliability of the Bible and also the evidences for the resurrection. Uh, now whereas the, the arguments were very compelling uh, they didn't actually do the business because whereas it silenced me, uh, I still found that I was not willing uh, to surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ because I didn't want anybody else telling me how to live. I think the biggest change came one Sunday night when we were at a Bible study and they were making their way through the book of Romans and they came to chapter one or they started in chapter one, I should say. and. It was a few verses in the middle of chapter one that caught my attention. Uh, it says something like this, that the wrath of God or the anger of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. For that which is known about God is evident to them because God has made it known to them that in, the, in, in, in his creation and in the beauty and awesomeness of creation, such that people are without excuse. And I remember a friend of mine saying that night, this verse shows that every single person has a knowledge of the existence of God. And that what they're doing, if they don't accept it, is that they're pushing it away from themselves because they don't like the implications. And he went on to say that the creation, creation within creation itself, the Lord has provided an abundance of evidence. So much so that 
the unbeliever has actually no excuse for his unbelief. I remember when he said that, I remember arguing with him and saying to him that I am the living proof that his Bible is wrong, uh, that I have no knowledge of the existence of God. But we argued him over and back for a while. And I remember walking home that night for the first time I realised that he was right and I was wrong. And that was the turning point, or it became the turning point for me. By that stage, I knew what was required. I had become convinced of what my friends had been saying to me was true. I had become convinced that atheism just didn't hold mustard. It just wasn't true. Uh, and I was struggling with this whole idea of handing over my life to the management, if you like, of the Lord Jesus Christ. But eventually, I remember one time I was invited by my friends to go to Galway for the weekend. And a, a friend of ours had left their apartment free for us all to crash into. And I remember late, in the, late at night on the 16th of September, 1979, I still remember the night very well, uh, a friend of mine, he turned to me and he said, look, he says, I'm going to pray for you now. This is just before he went to bed. And I said to him, I says, if you want to do me a favour, I said, you could turn the light out. I'd be able to go to sleep. Um, in other words, I kept up the, the, the hard face, the hard front, right up to the last moment. Never let anybody know what was actually going on inside in my heart. But about 15, maybe 20 minutes later, after the light had been turned out, um, all I can say is it was as if the Holy Spirit of God said, now you know what you need to do. Now is the time. What are you going to do with all that you know? What are you going to do with it? And I thank God, by his grace and by his help that night, I surrendered my life to him and put my trust for the forgiveness that I knew I needed. Put my trust for that forgiveness in what Jesus had done for me on Calvary. For me, the difference has been, first of all, a sense of purpose and meaning. Uh, knowing that I am walking with the God who created the heavens and the earth, knowing that I can be directed and guided by him and have the wisdom that he wants me to have for life, but also to have an assurance that when I pass from this world that I go to be with him forever, not because of what I'm doing, but because of what the Lord Jesus Christ done for me. And, and that sense of assurance, that sense of peace is... Oh, it's, it's, it's so valuable, it's beyond description. So the question that has been asked is, is there anybody out there? Well, there most certainly is. The God described in the Bible, and you can know him. You can come to have a personal relationship with him through the Lord Jesus Christ.